My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on this show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. Hey folks, welcome back. Hey, let me ask you a question. Chances are, if you're anywhere in North America, Canada, the States, anywhere, you understand the impact of a lack of affordable housing in the market. I mean, I just go down downtown and small town Kamloops for crying out loud. There are tons of homeless people there. There's a huge, huge challenge with affordable housing here, small city, big city, you name it, everywhere. Well, today's special guest Mr. Ivan Alfaro is zooming in from beautiful Atlanta, Georgia, or thereabouts, and he's focusing on affordable housing. He's focusing on how to do well and do good at the same time. And no, we're not talking about Section 8 housing. We're talking about affordable housing for regular, real people. So, Ivan, welcome to the show. Great to have you. Thank you so much, Dave. I can't wait to share insights on the specific niche that I'm involved in. Well, yeah, let's let's jump right into that. So why don't you give us a 30,000 foot perspective, a quick snapshot of what your real estate investing business looks like these days? I don't know who they sell 30,000 foot ladders at Home Depot now, brother. I, I, I'm i sorry, I can't help. We'll, we'll let you go in a plane. How about that? Okay. So the long and short of it, compressed is the 2% rule. So that's the simplest way to think about how to do this work. And it's essentially, if you buy a property for 100,000, 2% of that is 2,000. So you gotta make 2,000 a month off of this property. And how do you do that? You know, How do you find those deals? We could get into more of that as we go throughout the show. Sure, but what, what, so what does your business look like right now, Ivan? Like, what do you, what kind of properties are you buying? What market are you in? What does oh, the okay. portfolio look like right now? So currently we operate about 25 doors. The biggest is a 14 unit. So we do multifamilies as as small as two uh, duplex, mm -hmm. and the biggest one, of course, the fourteen unit. We also have a triplex, and et cetera. Uh, that's okay. Kind of so all property. kind of small multifamilies. You're not not doing single family homes, correct? Correct. Got and it. the okay. reason for that is uh, I found out, you know, I, of course I can do rooming board situations in a single single family home, but I think it's a lot cleaner just to have separate units entirely, and we can meter them separately too versus a single family home, if you rent it to one family, you have essentially you have one vacancy and your profit could be gone for several months. You're hundred percent vacant. Forbid, yeah. Yeah. And God forbid you have a roof that, that messes up during those four months or a few months, and then you're really in the hole for profits. So right. having multifamily, you know, one person leaves, you still got the bulk of the others paying for the bills. Makes sense. So all right, so small multifamilies, anywhere from duplexes right now up to 14 units, probably more. Um, what market area are you focusing on primarily? In Georgia. In Georgia, so right, so outside of Atlanta, because Atlanta is a fairly expensive town, isn't it? Oh, so we bought a deal in Forest Park, which is just south of downtown Atlanta. We actually mm -hmm. found a blessing of a deal. That's that 14 unit I mentioned. We bought nice. that for five hundred and forty thousand dollars in twenty twenty two. Yeah, I'll talk about a congratulations. Okay, so yeah, so now it's starting to make sense. The two percent rule. So you're getting into something pretty low cost. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to get it for a hundred thousand dollars, you got to be generating at least two grand a month in rent. And the way that that's affordable is because you're doing multifamily properties. And it sounds like you're 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 really looking for very very low cost properties. Is that correct, Ivan? Yeah. So distressed assets, the things that people don't want to buy because they look ugly, but yeah. you and I both know that's where you make the most amount of money. It's kind of like if you apply that rule to the single family homes, you want the smallest, ugliest house on the block, yet you want it to be the right price because when the apex properties on that same block raise in value, it's going to be incremental versus the small, ugly house it's going to be through the roof. When, when you get it prettied up. Yeah. When you make yeah. that, turn that ugly duckling into the pretty swat, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Very, very cool. So talk to me about 
the affordability side of things here, Ivan, because I was poking around, looking around on your website, and it seems like that's like a real, real important part of this process for you and, and your team. So talk to me yeah. a little bit about that. So I, I want to deep dive. And after I left my job in 2017, I actually went into a depression. It was pretty awful because I realized my identity was rooted in my routines, my job that I honestly didn't like that much. I liked being around the people more than the work itself, being behind a keyboard as a website guy. Mm. And I realized, you know, sure, making money in real estate is great, but money will only drive you so far. It's the fulfillment that will get you jumping out of bed. And, you know, not even just thinking about routines in life and day to day, but what am I going to do to drive meaning to somebody else's life, help them, give them a, not a handout, but a hand up in life. You know, so many millions, probably billions of people throughout the world need just a hand up. They're willing to do the work. It's just somebody there to give them the opportunity. So I, I realized that because also I grew up in Chicago, which is like an epicenter of gentrification, where mm -hmm. the lack of affordable housing is much more worse than Atlanta, Georgia. So I saw intricate uh, upbringing, or uh, in my upbringing, intricate ways how that plays out. Mental health issues, you know, anxiety, stress. My parents ended up splitting. One of the main reasons for divorces are financial issues. So, so they were getting price, they were getting priced out of where they were living. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had to get further and further away from the city just to maintain every six to twelve months. Jeez. And so it was quite a tragic thing. I, I got blessed in that I had a couple mentors growing up, but mm -hmm. some of my friends didn't have such a blessing, and and they didn't end up in in so not so good areas. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. So walk me through the business model a little bit, if you don't mind, Ivan, like you're doing good in the community, but you're still doing pretty well for yourself and your investors with these kind of opportunities. So kind of maybe walk me through a typical deal and what's in it for you, what's in it for your tenant, what's in it for your investor partners? Like how does it, how does it work from a business side of things? So because it's heavy cash cows, there's a lot of risk offsets. So as opposed to buying something in a luxury class A area where you got, you're splitting pennies with each other, you got the 1% cap rate, uh, there's nothing to be distributed if something goes wrong. Right. But when we're talking about distressed assets where people need affordable housing, whether it's a top or a bottom market, uh, it helps to risk, like I said, offset risk. So there's that, the cash and like coming in every month. But then there's also the evaluation. So in multifamily, as opposed to single family, they have these things called cap rates, which could force the appreciation up in relatively short order versus a single family home. It's based on what's around within the same subdivision. A multifamily, just find the nearest thing that is making X cap rate. So to give you an example, this 14 unit that we got for 540,000, we forced the appreciation we took it from 80,000 gross to 120,000 gross in about a year and a half by improving the quality of the unit. It had many years of deferred maintenance and most of the rents are still under 950 a month there. So very affordable um, and they're great. You've, you've kept most of the rents at under 950, is that what you're yeah. saying? Or they were when yeah. you bought it? And what made that so easy was because they were drastically under rented before okay. to like 435 <laughs> a month, 525 a month. <laughs> so so basically you were taking it from i don't know if this is the right term or not kind of a slummy situation yeah and bring it leaks, up and mold. what's that there were some units had leaks and mold just, yeah the previous tenant owners just didn't care and mm. so they were grateful to have somebody that actually cared and we're glad to have these non nominal increases uh, well it didn't sound like it was a nominal increase it sounds like you it was almost like a 50% increase in, in the rent. So, but well, compared to the rest of the area. So I'll give you an example. There's a studio that went for 435 a month. It's currently at 525. We increased it about a hundred. Mm -hmm. For the one bedroom, like the bigger units, not the studio, they used to be rented at 750 a month. So on the top end of that average, they're about 1100, but they're also much bigger units. Okay. So yeah. it's kind of depends on the condition. What we have done to renovate the unit is how we factor into the price too. 
and I imagine this was kind of a gradual thing. You'd, you yeah. you were doing the renovations over time, unit by unit, not the whole building. Yeah, and we were transparent with them, like, hey, if you want us to renovate your unit, we will do it. Uh, it just mean increases. So another studio, for example, that we did a full gut job on, um, one person, as we took ownership, was actually being actively evicted. So that was a one bedroom. We converted it to two studios. So each side is 780 and the slightly smaller one is 770 a month. So nice. by that density increase, by just using existing square footage, we're still maintaining affordability, but we're diversifying the, the asset and getting more cash flows out of it. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And not only that, but you're making it a much more pleasant living environment for everybody in there. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is has been the turnover in that building? Like how many of the original tenants have stuck around in the new and improved uh, units and, and even paying a, a higher rent, but they like where they live kind of thing? I would say about 30% or less. Um, you know, it, everybody has a different, unique experience they're going through. Some yeah. people may lose their job. Some people may actually feel like one guy entitled to not pay. <laughs> yeah, like, it's it, it's, it's really, tough, man. It's <laughs> um, Yeah, so one, one that happened like two months into it. I think it's also a, a partial blame on the previous owner, though, because if you have a previous owner that is just, you know, pressing their knee down on on the experience for the, the tenant. Like it's like who would respond positively to a landlord if they're being treated like garbage? Well yeah. I mean obviously the the previous owner didn't give a crap about the building, didn't give a crap about the tenants, yeah. probably owned it free and clear. So they just wanted less headaches. So they charged less rent just to kind of keep the keep the cash flow going. But it yeah, didn't so want to put anything back into it. Yeah, behaviors get established there. Um, yeah. Social patterns get established there. And unfortunately, we have to break them, but that's also a part of growing that person too. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. So you got to go in there, you're cleaning the whole place up, you're going to just naturally have turnover because a lot of the people were accustomed to the way it was and, and aren't willing to, to change and definitely mm -hmm. not willing to pay more, yeah. even though it's still super affordable. Yeah, I doubt if they could find anything else. In the case of that guy who just didn't want to pay, he was at six fifty a month, and we were glad to leave it there. He just didn't want to pay, <laughs> like, <laughs> so he he messed up a, a good situation. A one bedroom in Atlanta has to be like sixteen hundred a month average wow. right now. Yeah, yeah, interesting, interesting stuff. So must feel pretty good with with some of the success stories that you get from some of your tenants. What? What's one example that really kind of sticks out in your mind, Ivan? Early on in my 20s, when I had a, a single family home and I was renting by the room, uh, it was like $500 to $700 a month. So I had this, uh, this gentleman that reached out. It turned out he just got out of prison. He was in there for 12 years. And after screening him, and I, I was lucky I also had an interrogator as a mentor, I kind of knew he was a sincere guy <laughs> through my screening process. Yeah. And luckily, you know, he was sincere. He stayed in the basement. Uh, he rebuilt his life within two years coming out of prison. And I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. I mean, he reunited with his family. He was able to buy a house uh, just in the suburb of Atlanta. And uh, I believe it's Conyers. And oh, I didn't mention he learned how to become an electrician in prison. So he has an electrical background, and he, to this day, he helps me with electrical work too. <laughs> so you've kept you've kept that relationship over all these years. Yeah, he's a great guy. Oh, that is wonderful. Yeah, that's that's the when you're going through the crap with those lousy tenants that don't appreciate anything. That's the guy that's that's nice to remember. The why why yeah, we always got I would stuff. say the majority of people are great um, yeah. if you communicate properly, establish boundaries properly. You don't want to be stepped on either too, right? Um, more recent example, there was a, a woman that was in a hotel cycle where she was just fighting to pay it every week. And by moving into one of our places for seven eighty a month, she was able to, you know, reunite her family too and also buy herself a minivan. So upgrade her car. Wow. And yeah, so that sort of stuff is very fulfilling work and definitely makes up for the difference. Uh, I will say 
people have a misconception that they're super difficult when you're de dealing with this type of asset. If I had to count out of probably over a hundred tenants I've had, it's probably been under five that I've had to evict or caused headaches to me. Yeah. 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 And unfortunately for a lot of people, they always remember the five and they forget about the 95. That yeah. Had, right. So that's no, it's, it seems to be human nature, but you're so yeah. correct. You're so right. Interesting stuff. Let me ask you a question, Ivan. So these kind of properties that you're focusing on, what kind of areas of town are they typically located in? Are these, are these kind of in the, in the hood, so to speak, or in the, where, what part, what areas of town are they in? Oh, it varies. Um, like the triplex I purchased, that's a really, I would say B, C class right now, mm -hmm. probably closer to B, but that took time. I bought it in 2015 for $150,000 and it's just continued to go up from there. As you and I both know, real estate generally increases over time, mm -hmm. uh, even if there's a temporary dip. Um, but that is a good neighborhood. The duplex in Columbus, Georgia, is just seven minutes away from downtown, but I will say the area is not that pretty. Mm -hmm. But here's the the cool thing about that. Uh, so if you're able to have the courage to be one of the first ones on the block, if I wouldn't say go into like the hood where you know there's crime, because I haven't needed to go there, you can find deals through wholesalers in great uh, C and B class neighborhoods that are okay. But the great thing about that um, Columbus property is since I was the first guy there and I've stabilized the asset, now there's like hundreds of thousands of dollars being invested around me. And guess what's going to happen with my property because of that? Yeah, it increases yeah, the value. shoot up like crazy. Yeah. yeah. Very, very so cool. I bought that duplex just for $46,000 too, by the way. So <laughs> some, some pretty good deals there. So Ivan, what are the plans for the next 12 to 24 months? Where, where are you taking your real estate investing business over the next year or two? So I'm growing the uh, real estate fund, the affordable housing fund through my company, commonwalk.com. And yeah, I'm just ex excited. We have a $10 million raise we're raising for. And yeah, I'm just excited mainly about that. So we could keep on delivering people from cycles of poverty, of anxiety, of stress, and economic factors too. Like real estate is the biggest inflation or a factor in inflation. Mm. So we're... I, I always call it a big old gigantic hammer through affordable housing. We're fixing a huge amount of problems through this gigantic ha hammer of investing in this. And the nice thing is you can do well at the same time. Yeah, exactly. That's Bring profits weird. to me and my investors too at the same time. Yeah, no, that, that sounds great. So Ivan, I'm sure there's going to be some people listening or watching this going, hey, that Ivan guy sounds like a pretty cool guy. I want to get to know him better. Where should they go? They should go to commonwalk.com and check out our investment firm's website. And I look forward to talking to you through, through there. Just hit the contact form and you can schedule a time with us. Sounds good. Well, Ivan, thanks very much for being on the show and keep up the good work with affordable housing. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate your time too. All right, everybody. Take care and we will see you on the next episode. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you've subscribed. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at MoneyPartnerFormula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit moneypartnerformula.com to find out more. All right, take care and we'll see you on the next interview.